Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Gutsy Presenter. So good to have you back. Good to be here. Hey, Jennifer, how are you? Hi, I am doing well and looking forward to this conversation with you, Scott. That was good because in order to answer my question, you had to be listening. <laughs> is that our topic? That is our topic today. <laughs> Isn't that great? Uh, we are talking about speaking, but I mean, we usually talk about speaking, but we're going to talk about listening. And I think a lot of people think of those as like opposite stuff. Well, we can forget to listen as the presenter. Yeah. We can get so wrapped up in just giving our presentation and getting through it. We forget to listen and there's different ways to listen with our audience. Well, what, give me an example of two ways that you can listen to your audience. Well, it's the listening to their question, their questions truly being in the moment when they're asking their questions versus trying to already think of the answer. And yeah. then you're, you don't truly grasp what they're asking. Yeah. So there's that form of listening. And then there's also the, the listening with your, with your eye contact and yeah. watching your audience as you present, because even though they're not necessarily talking with you, they are still communicating their engagement, their understanding, their boredom, whatever yeah. it is. Whatever truly, it is, yeah. They're truly communicating. Are we listening? Yeah. It, it's, I mean, what I said earlier about people think of it as opposite stuff. Like we have this model in our head that when you speak, you are the source and stuff goes over to the audience who is in listening mode. And then it might change direction when you say, well, do you have any questions? And then they talk and it goes this way. But I don't think it really works that way. I think mm -hmm. it's more, if you're a great speaker, while you're talking, you know, at least on sort of a sentence by sentence level, you're still listening because the light is bouncing off your audience and you see their, their body language and their facial I expressions agree. and it's going in even as words are going out. I yes. think yes. that's really what makes for a masterful speaking. It, it does. And I know we, I know we've touched on this before around yeah. the eye contact. I'm going to put it with this virtual environment because still over and over I'm watching virtual presenters. This is the view that their audience has of them because they're yeah. reading off of another monitor and there is no way if this is how you are presenting, there is no way that you can be listening and being a part of your audience. It's, yeah. a, it's impossible. And the worst part of that is your audience knows that you are not paying any attention to them yeah so what are they gonna do they're gonna get on their phone <laughs> yeah they're gonna multitask they're going to shut down there is no engagement with this view yeah it's critical it's, it really is it is it is so critical it goes back to that question why do we present why do we put skin in the game you know, why do we literally, instead of sending a recording of ourselves, why do we talk and get everybody together at one time to, oh to give gosh. a presentation? And that's because, <laughs> what's that? I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. You just made me think of something. Go for it. All of the time we put into preparing. Yeah. The nervousness we experience, the sleepless night before, don't put all of that to waste by not creating that connection and yeah. listening with your audience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to it, be careful because you're saying all that preparation. I don't want people to go back into, well, you mean all the scripty like stuff I do where I try to plan all my content perfectly, just get all the slides lined up <laughs> and prep and prep and prep so I can hit the playback button when I get there. That's not what we're talking about. No. That's yeah, there's not. other ways, of course, very important ways that you can prep and you should prep. But the point really is we get into presentations because um, 
you can't listen when you're playing back a video. You, you, there, there is no listening going on. So I always encourage people to think of every presentation as a very spontaneous, potentially very spontaneous moment where the audience is included in creating something unique that can only happen if you listen, you know? Yes, the key is including the audience. Yeah. That's our next episode. We should do that later. Yeah. That's, a, that's an episode all on its own. We're going to yeah. come back to that. Yeah. How to include the audience. <laughs> well, and I wanted to there mention- key a, points. A, you mentioned something about, so asking questions and listening. And maybe there's something really insightful to, to this idea. Like when we talk, we want to find out, we want to touch on what's very relevant to the audience, what matters to the audience. And I don't care how much audience analysis you do. It is really hard to know. You may never know exactly what matters to an audience in the moment. So when you open it up for the audience to speak and they ask a question, I would say really good listening in that case is listening to what's behind the question. Yes. Seeing that question. We talked about this a little bit before too, but looking for clues. What does this question say about what matters to the audience? Mm -hmm. And I think that's another really important point that great listeners are always trying to get into the hearts of their audience to understand what's relevant, what's meaningful and, and touch that, get to that point. I, I, I agree, Scott. This is especially important if you're giving a presentation in front of key stakeholders. And yeah. let's say it's your senior executive leader that asks a particular question during your presentation. If we're not truly listening to that question and what's behind the question, that senior executive might be trying to take your presentation down a different path. Yeah that's going to provide the value that he or she needs. Yep. We don't want to miss that opportunity. And yeah. then that goes back to, we need to be able to pivot our presentation in that moment to go yes. down that path. So we can't hang on to our own agenda for the presentation so tightly because it's a fluid conversation. You don't yeah. know where it's going to go. And I think that's exciting. Yes. I think it takes the pressure off of us that we have to follow this rigid agenda. Yeah. Well, and let's, let's acknowledge that some people get very scared when they're presenting to an executive that they won't have the answer to the question. So <laughs> the question comes and they're racing to say, how do I answer this in a smart way? <laughs> right. But here's, here's another huge learning point connected to listening. And that is, if you're constantly worried about you in the act of that presentation or conversation, then things go that direction. You, you start to freeze up because you're so worried about how do I look? Do I look smart? Am I answering this well? <laughs> Where the other idea is, like, I may have an executive leader. I could sit in my mind and say, this is so important for my career. Or I could just go, I really want to listen to what matters to this person, this human being who is experiencing this presentation and deliver value to them. Yes. You know, I think, I think you get payback in the end. It's karma, speaking karma, right? What? Oh, I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> speaking <You're>, karma. <laughs> you like, you don't like that term speaking karma? I don't. <laughs> All right. It's fine though. It's a good term for you to use. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. I like it. But how would you wrap this up? What's your little word of wisdom about this topic listening? Well, this is a, this is a very interesting topic because we actually just brought in a bunch of different presentation skills just into this short conversation. Yeah. And I'm going to go back to right before you give a presentation, have that mindset of, I get to have a conversation with this yeah. group. I get to help them and I get to have a conversation. If you are asked that question by your executive leader and you don't have the answer, 
it's fine. We don't, yeah. no one has all of the answers to everything. Right. It's simply either tapping into your audience and seeing if someone in your audience has information they can share around it or letting the leader know, I'm yeah. going to get that information for you and follow up. Yeah. It yeah. takes the pressure off. Yes, it does. Well, that was wonderful coverage of an awesome topic. It was good very work. good. Good job, what, Scott. What are we doing next week? Ooh, next week is our gutsy presenter, guinea pig. Yes. Yes. yes we have Joel Perez. Yes. He is an executive coach with DE and I, and okay. we get to hear from him and we get to watch him present. That's right. And coach him and critique. coach him. <laughs> we get to coach a coach. We I do. Love it. I like, I, that's always, um, and a very, uh, eye-opening thing. Always. All right, everybody. Thanks, thank you. Everyone. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. See you soon.